Hello and welcome to another video on DeFi Kingdoms. In the last episode, I shared my initial research and how that guided me to design the initial strategy that I will be entering the game with. If you have not watched that, the link is in the description that will provide you the context to this video. Today, it's all about execution and getting our hands dirty, so let's get started. So the first thing that you will need when you start playing the game is that you are going to need jewels, which is basically the currency in game and you're gonna need one which is kind of used as gas in the game itself and you'll probably need more one as well if you intend to set up a liquidity pool with jewel which is what i plan to do so looking at jewel first it's currently trading at about 19 dollars 84 earlier today it hit its all-time high of 20 dollars 44 and i think this is largely driven by the crystal airdrop that will be provided to anyone who holds a 100x jewel in the bank so there's more on x jewels in the previous video so if you have not caught that yet once again the link is in the description below i'm personally bullish on DeFi kingdom and i feel i'm still relatively early so i'm okay to get in at this price this is not financial advice and please do your own research if you want to follow suit i was thinking that i was going to be able to buy jewel from the dexes which i commonly use but i realized that that was not going to be the case because as you can see here apart from mexc global and hotbeat the only other place where you can buy jewels is in the marketplace which is the DEX within the game itself. So setting up your MetaMask wallet to be compatible with the Harmony network is relatively straightforward. So I'm not going to spend too much time here. So all you have to do is get into your MetaMask wallet, click the networks, go to add network, and it will bring you to a page whereby you have to fill in some of the fields as you can see here. So you can easily find it online and I'll put this link in the descriptions below as well, just so that you have easy reference and you just have to fill in the fields respectively. The second thing which I needed to do was to bridge my funds which was on the BSC network to the ONE network. We can do that by going to the website bridge.harmony.one slash ERC20 where it will allow you to bridge assets on either BSC or ETH to the ONE network. My assets are on the BSC network so I will use that as the example. So the first thing you have to do is to select the network which is BEP20 for me. Select the assets that you want bridge, BUSD in my case you key in the amount that you want bridged and lastly your one wallet address click on continue confirm it and make sure the approved amount is correct before you continue confirm it again and you are good to go make sure you confirm the transaction as well once you give it a while you'll be able to confirm that you got your tokens by going into the marketplace you visit the trader and you can click on this button here and that will show you your assets in the wallet and you can see here bsc busd which is basically the bridged busd and i have the amount which i bridged over so the next thing I'll do is to swap some of my BSC BUSD to Jewel. So I'll click select a token, Jewel. So I will approve, give it a while, and I will swap anyway. As you saw, the liquidity for the BSC BUSD Jewel pair in the marketplace is horrible. The price impact for the amount of Jewel I wanted to get was about 14%, which is ridiculous. So I had to bridge out my BSC BUSD back into BUSD. If any one of you are facing a similar issue, then I'm going to go through this very quickly because this is not a bridging video. Basically, what you have to do is to do a reverse of what you have done. So instead of selecting Binance to 1, you select 1 to Binance. And the two things that you probably need to do differently is 1, you've got to make sure that your wallet is connected to the Harmony network. And 2, you've got to make sure that your BNB address is the correct one that you wish to receive it in. Apart from that, BP20 token address remains at BUSD and you go through a similar process. So what I've decided to do instead is to go through the UST route. So the first thing I'll do is to swap my BUSD into UST on PancakeSwap. So I'll confirm my swap. As usual, just approve the transactions. The next thing we need to do is to bridge our BSC UST to Terra. So this website, bridge.terra.money, will allow you to do that. Just have to select from BSC to the Terra network, select your asset, which is UST in this case, the amount that you want to bridge, and then you can key in your destination address which is a terra address click on next confirm ensure you have some bnb for guests 
approve the transaction and it will be underway. Once your UST has come through, then you repeat the process this time from Terra to Harmony. So same thing, you select the asset as UST, select the amount that you want breached over to the Harmony network, key in your destination address for Harmony, just need to factor in a bit of transaction fees and then click next click confirm and you should be good to go finally once that is done bridging you can come back to the marketplace and visit the trader and you will notice the price impact now it's much much lesser at 0.02% as compared to 14% with BSC BUSD what a hassle but finally glad I got it through so I'm going to trade my UST for jewels now so I'll select UST my token the jewel so I'll approve my UST confirm it and once it has been approved i'll move on and i'll swap it and confirm once again and we are good to go you can see at the top left hand corner once your jewels are in and now we can go hero shopping as in my previous video, I am shopping for heroes who can do professional quests efficiently. So I am prioritizing professional skills and then I balance out the generation of the heroes and the number of summons left to give me the best value for my jewels. To start off with the miners, I have decided to go with this thief. As you can see, I'm not so concerned about the class, but what I'm more concerned about is the mining skill. So you can see that the mining here is at 1.3, is significantly higher than rest of the class here within the same price range and the next thing to note is this is also an uncommon card which gives me more value it has a good number of summons too and its generation is at gen 2 which is again a little bit earlier than the rest that are in a similar price range who are normally in about gen 3 4 or even 5 so i'm gonna go ahead with this i'm gonna click approve confirm and she is hopefully mine soon and there it is, it's a proof, so I've got my miner. Looking at foraging now and adopting the same concept, I think it was a close call between this warrior, a level 1 gen 3 with a foraging skill of 8.1 and this level 1 gen 4 thief which has a foraging skill of 10.3 but I have decided to go with the warrior just because it's slightly cheaper and I think I'm okay with 8.1 instead of 10.3 and it's one gen earlier which just means that if in future I want to summon a hero with it it's gonna cost me less resource so let's go ahead hero details by hero confirm so I'm a little bumped up right now because the miner which I wanted to get which I thought was a fantastic deal did not go true for me because I approved the transaction but I didn't know that after you approve it you have to then click on it again to buy the hero so I have to come back and shop for another miner and after looking at a few of them I decided to go with a wizard here the level 1 gen 3 in terms of its mining skills it's one of the better ones among the rest in its same price range there are a couple here but I, this is a level 1 gen 4 so I prefer this because it's a level 1 gen 3 this one as well at 0 0.6 um, firstly it's a level 1 gen 5 and it's a thief of which I have already got for my other hero so I will proceed with this one and I'm gonna buy this hero and confirm so so initially this was approved for the very first time that you are looking to buy a hero so once you approve it subsequently you can just buy it but what I did for the first one was that after I approve it I thought that was done so don't make the same mistake guys confirm it again and that's done as well and the last hero that I'm looking to get is for fishing and it was a tough call between this archer and this monk but I've decided to go with the monk price difference wise is not that much first reason is gen 3 so one generation earlier than the archer yes the number of summons are five lesser with the monk but i do like that his fishing stats are in the double digits of 10.2 as compared to 8.2 with this archer and in full spirit of trying to get heroes that are able to farm efficiently i felt that this fishing stat was going to be the difference so let's go ahead by hero so confirm and we are done. So exiting this page, if you click on your character on the top left hand corner and you go to my heroes, you'll be able to see all the heroes that you purchased. So I have one for foraging, one for mining and one for fishing and now we're good to go to do quest. And now that we got our heroes, let's send them to do quests and you go there by going to professions. 
And as you can see, the four type of professional quests are here. So let's start with Fisher. Click on start quest. For now, I only have one hero. So I believe it should be this one. So I will select her, select hero, continue with one of six heroes, begin quest. As usual, remember to confirm and that's done. So let's do the same for the rest. We have the forager, start quest, select hero, continue with one because that's all I have. Begin quest, same thing, click on confirm and wait a little bit. Now that's done. And the last one will be miner, but the mining quest is not ready yet. So we will have to come back and visit that in a while. So that's all for the quest and your heroes are essentially out questing for you and farming for you. Alright guys, so after I went to explore the Discord channel a little bit, I realized that you can actually mine, but you have to go to the beta version of the game to be able to mine. So the website is beta.defikingdoms.com and then same thing, you just go to the professions area in the map. So now we can mine, so let's start go mining. I have one hero here now, so let's continue and let's begin mining. And off we go. And once your quest is done, you can come back straight to the profession area again. And I'll visit the miner this time, it took a while. I think the mining quest takes for my hero approximately 3 to 4 hours to get through the whole cycle. So once you get back here, you can click on active go mining, collect your hero. Yeah, so it took me 3 hours and 20 minutes. So I just left it and I'm back again today. So you just have to confirm it once again. And that's done. So I've got 50 gold and 112 experience. That's great. And to see the rest of the rewards, like for me that I got from foraging and fishing, you can always just come up here, click on inventory. So you can see I've got some bloater fish, iron scale. I've got Gaia tears from both of these quests, the lantern eye, ragweed, red leaf, and rock root. So I'm sure there's going to be utility for these, or you're going to be able to sell them at some point, but I'm going to have to do more research on these and I'll get back to you on it. So now that we've got all our heroes the next thing i'll do is to get into the DeFi aspect where i'll be staking some jewels and one in a liquidity pool so before that if you are looking to do the same you can again go to the marketplace and pick up your relevant tokens which was what i did so i'll go straight into the gardens now head into the seed box for me i'll be looking for jewel one so here it is click deposit at jewel one liquidity input the amount that you want to stake approve jewel Confirm. Once that is done, you can click on supply, confirm supply, and then we wait again for the confirmation. Click confirm and we wait. So once you've got your jewel LP tokens, you can then deposit them in the LP pool. Just click on deposit, select the amount that you want to stake and then deposit it. I wanted to do this live but I was facing some issues and I had to reach out to support and it turns out that the only time that I wasn't filming it was the time where my deposit went through. But it's relatively straightforward and in alignment with what I've showed you so just follow the steps and you'll get through with that. And once you have successfully deposited and staked, this is the screen that you will see. That's it for today and the objective was to put the strategy that I earlier discussed into motion and I think we achieved that starting from bridging our required assets. Remember, don't make the same mistakes as me, buying your jewels, your heroes, sending them out on quests and reviewing the loots and of course setting up your LP pools as well. So stay tuned to my Discord and Telegram, the links are in the descriptions below and Twitter at the Titan Squad one for more DeFi Kingdom updates. I'll keep you updated on the ROI from all these quests and if it's ultimately worth it, I'm sure that's the next question we all have. But till the next time, I'm rooting for Jewel and One to be on the rise. See you next time.